This video tutorial is intended for informational purposes only. If you attempt to reproduce or perform anything that I have depicted in this video, you are doing so at your own risk. I am not responsible for any damages, either personal or to your property, that may result from performing any of these procedures and modifications. This video has been made possible in part by Ben Venn. Check out his website today at benven.com. Hey guys, I'm Kyle, and thanks for joining me today. When I was about eight years old, I got this dandelion yellow Game Boy Color from my parents for Christmas. Ever since then, I've dreamed of writing new games to existing Game Boy and Game Boy Color game cartridges. This technology has always seemed to me that it should be more accessible, however it's always felt like it's just out of reach. There have been a great number of cart readers and writers supposedly available online for the past decade or so, but I've never been able to get my hands on any of them, and many of the companies that make such tools have rather curiously vanished. There are also many aftermarket game carts out there as well. Countless cheap Chinese multi-ROM carts, generic microSD driven carts, and the more widely known EverDrive to name a few. But those weren't good enough for me. I wanted to get something as close to a traditional, authentic-looking single-game cartridge as I could, and I was just about to give up all hope when I recently stumbled across an incredible find. Hi there, I'm Kyle, and I'm a 20-something living in Northern Kentucky, just south of Cincinnati, Ohio. I like to do lots of fun things. Some of them are a little crazier than others, but I also enjoy building cool stuff in my spare time, and I love traveling to and exploring all sorts of neat and interesting places. So this is my life. Welcome to my channel, and thank you for being here. Today I'll be taking you through the ins and outs of another one of Ben Venn's imaginative creations, the oddly named Joey Jobag's Cart Rider. I've done some videos in the past on some of Ben Venn's other custom video game tech, but I must admit that the Joey is by far one of his most ambitious and exciting projects yet. Essentially, this little gadget allows you to copy the video game ROM information and save data from genuine Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance game cartridges onto your computer, enabling you to back them up and play them in emulator software. Even more exciting than that, though, this little device allows you to write games and existing save data back onto some cartridges. However, there are some caveats to doing this, since it doesn't necessarily mean that you can write game information back onto genuine Nintendo game cartridges. These game carts are specifically protected against being rewritten. So for this process, we'll need to explore beyond genuine Nintendo hardware. I've split this tutorial into several different sections, covering everything from how to use and connect the Joy to a computer, the compatible cartridges to use with the Joey, updating the Joey's firmware and troubleshooting the Joey, and a whole lot more. For your convenience, I've included links to all of the websites and downloads that I mentioned in this video in the description below. So without further ado, let's dive into the tutorial part of this video and begin making our own custom Game Boy game cartridges. So that there's no confusion throughout this tutorial, I first want to talk about video game ROMs and save data. I will be showing you how to extract save data from game cartridges in a future tutorial video, but for this tutorial, we will only be focusing on extracting video game ROMs. Now if you're unfamiliar with the terminology, a video game ROM is a singular computer file containing the actual game from a video game cartridge or disc. Save files can also be stored on game carts, but they're typically located on an entirely separate microchip. In computer speak, ROM is an acronym that stands for read-only memory. People often refer to video game ROM files when they're talking about emulators, which are specially written computer programs that emulate the hardware environments that video games run in. Many emulators are available online as a free download and are written for game consoles spanning from the Sega Genesis to the Nintendo Wii and beyond. This begs the question, how do you even get a ROM that you can play in an emulator? The simple answer to this question is that extracting ROM files can be done via special tools. There are many websites available online that offer libraries of tens of thousands of video games, retro and new alike, available for free download. However, don't go googling your favorite video game and download a ROM for it just yet. 
Downloading ROMs for games that you don't already own is highly illegal. That doesn't mean that everybody's not already doing it. Truthfully, it's no different than illegally downloading movies and TV shows from the internet. Just be aware that downloading ROM files of games that you already own from the internet is a legal gray area. So for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do all of this using video games that I already own. I now proudly introduce to you the Joey Jobags Cart Writer. As previously mentioned, this gadget can read game data from your original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance game cartridges, as well as write game data to specific aftermarket carts. The Joey is available on Benven's website, benven.com, for $50. Now, that price may seem a little steep for something like this, but I can assure you it is worth every penny. You get a lot of bang for your buck with this device, as it has an extensive and ever-growing cartridge compatibility list. Ben also wrote custom companion software for the Joey, which is required for using it. The software is officially compatible with Windows 7, 8, 8.1, and Windows 10, and is available for download from Ben's site for free. Ben updates this software with support for new cartridges pretty regularly, unlike many other cart reader solutions that are still out there. I've put links to the Joey software download page, as well as the store page where you can purchase a Joey of your very own in the description below, and I will be covering using the software in more detail very shortly. Over the past few years, the internet has seen a huge surge of bootleg, inauthentic Nintendo game cartridges hitting the market, most commonly in the form of ultra-cheap, Game Boy Advance Pokemon games. These fake games have been showing up on websites like eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, and Etsy, and they're confusing customers into thinking they're getting a crazy good deal on an authentic Nintendo product. That's quite the contrary, however, because although these games do boot up and play just like the real thing, these are cheap, Chinese imitations that were created for the sole purpose of flooding the market. Fortunately, an alternate use has been found for them. Since they're so cheaply made, they typically don't have any of the memory safeguards that genuine Nintendo game cartridges do, meaning that they can be easily rewritten with new games. Thus, Ben Venn created the Joey, which allows that exploitation of these cheap cartridges. For this tutorial, we will be focusing primarily on rewriting these bootleg Game Boy Advance Pokemon cartridges with the Joey. These carts are available for purchase on eBay from various sellers. To buy one, go on your computer and open your web browser, and head over to ebay.com, and type in the search box, Pokemon Ruby Reproduction, or whichever other version of Game Boy Advance Pokemon game you prefer. Then in the search results, look for the sellers who are shipping from China. Typically, you should be able to find a few different auctions selling bootleg carts for anywhere from $3 to $10 with free shipping. The downside to this is that you have to sometimes wait up to an entire month to receive your package, especially if you live in the USA. So I highly recommend ordering a minimum of two to three cartridges at a time, since sometimes you may run into trouble with the memory module on one of these carts being dead on arrival or going bad shortly after. Remember, these carts are cheap, and they're made out of cheap components. At any rate, I went online and bought one. I mean, two. Okay. So I bought a handful. It is worth noting that the Joey also supports rewriting a variety of other aftermarket game cartridges. One of the most notable of these is probably Ben Venn's repurposed Japanese Pokemon RTC carts, which support Game Boy and Game Boy Color game ROMs that utilize a real-time clock, like Pokemon Crystal and the Pokemon Prism fan project. I highly recommend picking up one of these carts if you get the chance. Now, the fun begins. To use the Joey Jobags Cart Writer on your computer, we first need to install the software drivers for it. I'll be showing you how to do all of this using my laptop, which is running Windows 10 build version 1709. Windows in general is pretty picky with the drivers that it lets you install, and Windows 10 has added a layer of security that blocks so-called unsigned drivers from being installed. Unluckily for us, the Joey Cart Writer utilizes an unsigned driver so it won't let us install it without some work first. Officially signing software drivers is stupidly expensive, guys, 
That is the only reason that the Joey's driver software is unsigned. Fortunately, we can disable that extra layer of security in Windows 10. So naturally, we'll start there. Begin by restarting your computer into recovery mode. To do this, open the Start menu and click on the gear to open the Settings page. Next, go to the Update and Security page. Open the Recovery page and select Restart Now under the Advanced Startup section. Your computer will begin the restart process, but this time it will go to the recovery screen first. In here, select Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, Startup Settings, and Restart. Your computer will complete restarting, and then prompt you with the Startup Settings screen. The option you want on this screen is number 7, Disable Driver Signature Enforcement. So press the number 7 key on your keyboard, after which your computer should proceed booting into Windows 10 and then you will be prompted to log in as normal. Next, we'll go download the Joey's required companion software. Open your internet browser and navigate to www.benven.com. On the home page, click the link to go to the downloads page, where you'll find a variety of downloads, including several versions of the Joey software. Be sure to download the newest version. At the time of the making of this video, version 3.34 of the Joey software is the most current, However, that may be different when you visit this page. Click on the link to download the file, which will download to your computer as a RAR archive. To open this archive file, you need to download and install WinRAR, which is available for free from www.rarlab.com. Once you have installed WinRAR, locate your downloaded RAR file and double-click it to open. Once it opens inside of WinRAR, simply highlight and drag the three files inside it to your desktop. This will unpack the files necessary for installing and using the Joey on your computer. After you've completed downloading and unpacking the Joey software, you can now plug your Joey Jobags cart writer into your computer using a USB-A to USB Mini-B cable. Please remember not to connect your Joey to your computer while a game cartridge is plugged into it, as some game carts can trigger an unusable administrative function in the Joey hardware. Once your Joey is connected to your computer, then the driver for it can be installed. You will need to use an administrator user account in Windows when doing this. First, open the Device Manager by right-clicking on the Start menu and selecting Device Manager. Once that window appears, you should see the Joey listed as a device under the Other Devices section. Right-click on the Joey and select Update Driver in the menu that comes up. In this window, choose Browse My Computer for Driver Software. And in the next screen, click the Browse button to choose the path to the driver folder, which we downloaded from Benven's website and unpacked to the desktop earlier. After selecting the folder, click the Next button. You may be prompted with a warning message like the one shown here, but don't be alarmed since this is only because of the driver signing issue that I mentioned earlier. Click on Install this driver software anyway, and the software should begin installing. After all that, and if you did everything correctly, you should be greeted with a message that Windows installed the Joey drivers. Go ahead and click Close on that window, and then close the Device Manager as well, since we won't be needing it again. Now you can open the Joey software. This can be located in the folder called DIST, which we unpacked earlier with the Joey's driver folder. You're looking specifically for an EXE application file in the root of that folder. For Joey software version 3.34, the file is called Joey Jobex 334. Double click on this file. You may be greeted by another one of Windows 10's security measures, this time a message from Windows Defender, saying that it doesn't trust the program. Ignore this by clicking on More Info, and then the Run Anyway button. This should deter any further security prompts from appearing when starting the Joey application. And look at that! After all that work, the Joey companion software is finally open and running, and we can tell that it correctly detected the cart writer, because we are greeted with this welcome message. As you can see, the Joey software is two parts. 
one being an interface window with various menus and options, and the other being the output progress window, which will show operation progress based on what options you select in the interface window. Together, these are the screens that you will be manipulating and monitoring in order to read and write cartridges with the Joey. There's one last important detail that I want to share with you regarding the Joey's driver installation process. If you're like me, and you're using Windows 10 with the Joey, you will periodically be forced to reinstall your Joey driver software and repeat the entire aforementioned process for enabling the installation of unsigned drivers on your computer. This is because that every time Windows 10 installs a security update, it will kick out all currently installed unsigned drivers. So get familiar with this process, because you'll probably be performing it a lot. Upon first opening the Joey software, you may notice that your Joey's firmware version is older than the version of the software that you're currently running, which in this case is version 3.34. If this is the case, this can be fixed by performing what's called a firmware update on your Joey cart writer. If we look back at the files that we downloaded earlier in step 4, you'll see a file with the extension .ben, which for us is named 3 underscore 34 ben. This is the updated firmware file for your Joey, and it has new sets of instructions for carts that Benven has added to the Joey's library of supported hardware. There are two different methods for updating the firmware on the Joey, each with their own requirements. Looking back in the Joey software's interface window, under the drop-down menu labeled Joey, we'll see three options. Enter Update Key, Update Firmware, and Update Firmware Legacy. Let's begin with the Update Firmware Legacy option. If your Joey is running a firmware version below version 3.30, then you must use the Update Firmware Legacy option to update your Joey to the latest version. Select that option to open the file selection screen. From this screen, we want to select the updated firmware file that we unpacked earlier. Select the 3 underscore 34 ben file and click the Open button. You will hear the Windows device disconnect chime and then the reconnect chime. Wait about 10 seconds to make sure that the new firmware flash is completed, and then close the Joey software. Reopen the Joey software, and check the firmware version in the interface window. If you did all of this correctly, then the newly installed firmware version should be displayed. Now we will move on to using the standard update firmware option on the Joey menu. Once your Joey has been updated beyond version 3.30, then you will need to use the standard Update Firmware option. By default, using the Update Firmware option is locked out with a special key code, for which you will need to contact Benven directly in order to get. This update key is based on your Joey device's unique hardware ID, which can be found at the bottom of the Joey software's interface window. Write down your entire hardware ID and send Benven an email at benven at hotmail.com or contact him via his official Facebook community page. Once you have your update key, go to the Joey drop-down menu and select Enter Update Key. This will bring up a window that you can type your key into. Once you've typed in your update key from Ben, then click OK. If your key is correct, then you should receive a message that your ability to update the Joey's firmware has been enabled. Go back into the Joey drop-down menu and now click on the Update Firmware option, which will bring up a file selection menu. Like before, we want to select the updated firmware file that we unpacked earlier. Select 3 underscore 34 dot ben and click the Open button. You will hear the Windows device disconnect chime and then the reconnect chime. Wait about 10 seconds to make sure that the new firmware flash is completed, and then close the Joey software. Reopen the Joey software, and check the firmware version in the interface window. If you did all of this correctly, then the newly installed firmware version should be displayed. Great job! You've completed updating your Joey Cartwriter's firmware. At this point in the process, you are now set to begin messing with games using your Joey. For starters, I'll begin by showing you the basics of reading ROM information from video game cartridges by performing what is called a ROM dump. 
Dumping refers to the process in which you pull game information from a cartridge's flash microchip, which is where the game data is actually stored, and copy it to your computer. For this process, I'll be showing you the ropes using my own official copy of Metroid Zero Mission for Game Boy Advance. I'll also show you how to play the extracted video game ROM file on your computer using a Game Boy Advance emulator. The emulator software I'll be using for this part of the tutorial is called Visual Boy Advance. It can be downloaded for free from the Emulator Zone website, emulator-zone.com, and I've included a direct link below in the description to the Visual Boy Advance software download page. With your Joey Cartwrighter connected to your computer and the Joey software open, insert your official Game Boy Advance game cartridge into the Joey. In the Joey software interface window, open the Cart Type menu. Then select the GBA Generic section and click on the Read Header option. This will read a specific part of the cart's flash memory that contains name information for the ROM that is loaded on the cart. If this information populates, that typically means that your cart is properly connected and the rest of the data on the cart is ready to read. However, if this information does not populate, I will be covering some helpful troubleshooting tips towards the end of this video. After successfully reading the header on the cart, you are now ready to dump the ROM data from the cartridge onto your computer. Back in the cart type menu, open the GBA generic section once more, and then open the dump ROM submenu at the bottom. This should bring up a menu of several different file sizes. This menu is for you to determine how large of a file you want to copy your cartridge data into. 64 megabits is typically large enough for most ROM files, so I recommend selecting that for your first try. You can always change this later if it ends up being too large or too small. Once you select the dump file size, a file save menu will appear. Choose a save location. I recommend the desktop, and type in the name you want for your ROM file and then click Save to begin the dumping process. You should see memory block data being posted on the Joey Software's output progress window. Let this process finish, and do not touch or remove your cartridge from the Joey, or disconnect the Joey Cartwriter from your computer while this process is running. After a few minutes, and depending on the file dump size that you selected, the Joey Software will let you know it has finished the dumping process by posting the word done in the output progress window. This means that the ROM dump from your Game Boy Advance cartridge has been completed. Download Visual Boy Advance from the internet and unpack the emulator software from the zip folder it came in and then run it on your computer. Once the emulator software opens, you should see a blank black screen Click on the File menu, and select Open at the top. A file selection screen will appear, where you can find and select the game ROM file that you just dumped onto your computer. Select the ROM you want to load, and click Open. With a little luck, your dumped ROM file should start up and run just like it does on a real Game Boy Advance. Running your dumped game ROM files in an emulator just to double check them is always a good idea, since it's a very reliable and quick way to test them and make sure that they've dumped correctly. I should also mention that dumping game ROMs from genuine Game Boy and Game Boy Color game cartridges using the Joey works much the same way as dumping game ROMs from Game Boy Advance cartridges. To do so, all you have to do in the Joey software is open the GBC generic section under the cart type menu, select dump ROM and then choose the ROM file from the drop-down box in the Save menu, which in this case would be either GB ROM file or GBC ROM file. And just like physical Game Boy Advance consoles, the Visual Boy Advance emulator software also supports playing original Game Boy and Game Boy Color game ROM files. Please remember that if you encounter any problems reading header information, or game ROM data from your cartridges. Towards the end of this video, I also recommend solutions for fixing some of the most common problems that you may run into when using the Joey. Now we're finally to one of the most exciting parts of this entire tutorial, where I show you how to write a game ROM file back onto a cartridge. As I mentioned earlier, we can't use just any cartridge for this process we have to use our Chinese bootleg Pokemon carts. 
To further complicate things, there's not just one single model of bootleg cartridge out there either. Fortunately, when it comes to bootleg Nintendo handheld cartridges, Ben Ben's pretty much got you covered, as he's already written a brief guide identifying several of the most common versions of bootleg cartridges out there. Per the norm, I've included a link to the bootleg cart guide on his website in the description below. You're going to need a tri-wing screwdriver to get your bootleg carts open in order to compare them to the ones detailed in his guide. From there though, comparing them can be done visually, since they're all pretty distinctly different based on the layout differences for each board. Here's one of my carts opened up. When comparing it to Ben Ven's online guide, I found that my cartridge can be flashed in the Joey Cartwriter software using the BV128 option found under the Cart Types drop-down menu. In the version of the software I'm using, version 3.34, the cart flashing option is now labeled as GBA Benven 128M. Notice the several other cart options in this section as well, indicating support for some of the other common bootleg cartridges available online. If you have purchased a bootleg Game Boy cartridge of some kind in the recent past, chances are it's already supported in this software, and Ben is continually adding support for more bootlegs as they're discovered. You also probably noticed one other important thing about the style of bootleg cart that I have. In Ben's guide, you see that his picture of this cart shows it with a save battery installed. This battery is no different than the batteries installed in older Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, in that it is in place to preserve and keep your save files alive, at least until the battery dies. Here's another one of my bootleg carts, which is exactly the same model as my first one I showed you, except I've installed a battery in it so that it can keep saved game data. I will be covering all of this in my next Joey Jobegs tutorial video, which will be focusing specifically on all of the challenges associated with preserving and copying saved game data using the Joey. For right now, I'll only be covering the basics of saved game data, which will be just enough to allow you to write games onto your bootleg carts. There are several different types of what's called non-volatile memory, like the microchip that your saves are stored on, that are used in these bootleg Game Boy Advance cartridges. They are SRAM, FRAM, EEPROM, and FLASH. SRAM being probably the most commonly used type. The reason this is important information to know is because these memory types are quite different from one another, and thus, so are the video game ROM files that are written for each type of memory. For example, if you write a video game ROM file to a bootleg cartridge with SRAM on it for the save data, and the ROM file itself has code written to it for using EEPROM save storage, you will have no way to save your in-game progress on your bootleg cartridge. Fortunately, there's a piece of software available that can help remedy this situation by converting the supported save type of your Game Boy Advance ROM files to SRAM so that they will work on your bootleg carts. This program is called GBeta, and it is available as a free download online from the website www.no-intro.org. As always, I've included a link to the download page for this software in the description below. Download GBeta from the software's website. Unpack it from its zipped folder. And then run the program. Using GBeta is pretty straightforward. First, you want to load your Game Boy Advance ROM file into the program. To do so, click on the button on the right side of the file name section. This will open a file selection menu, where you can select your ROM file. For me, I will be loading the Metroid Zero Mission ROM file that I dumped onto my computer earlier. Select your file, and then click the Open button. Once the file opens, look at the bottom of the window in the Header Viewer tab and you will see a section called Save Type. This section will indicate whether or not the ROM you loaded already supports SRAM, as well as if it has already been patched or not. As you can see, my Metroid Zero Mission ROM file already supports saving to SRAM, so nothing needs to be done to it. However, if you do have a ROM file that says something other than SRAM in this field, like the Super Mario Advance 4 Game Boy Advance ROM that I've loaded here, which says it only supports saving to Flash, then you will need to convert the ROM Save Type. To convert the save type for a given Game Boy Advance ROM, go to the SRAM Patcher tab in GBeta. Here you will find that a new name for the patched ROM file is already generated with the prefix output at the beginning of the ROM file's name. 
You can choose to change the name and save location of the converted file if you want, but for me I'll keep it as is. Click on the patch button, and after a brief moment, a window will pop up saying that the patching has been completed. To confirm that the ROM file patched correctly, all you have to do is load the newly converted file into GBeta, and check the Save Type field in the Header Viewer tab. If you did everything correctly, you should now see that your game ROM file has been patched. Now that we have confirmed that our Game Boy Advance ROM file can save to SRAM, we can now write the ROM itself onto a bootleg cartridge. As a reminder, please remember that this process will erase any video game ROM data that is currently stored on your bootleg cartridge, and you cannot rewrite genuine Nintendo game cartridges. With your Joey Cartwriter connected to your computer, plug your bootleg Game Boy Advance cartridge into the Joey. Next, reopen the Joey Companion software. We will now need to choose the cart model that we want to write to. As mentioned earlier, my bootleg cart uses writing option GBA Benven 128M in the cart type drop-down menu. So remember to determine your bootleg cartridge's model using Benven's online guide. To begin the writing process, select the flash ROM option in the section for your desired cart type. This will bring up a file selection window where you need to choose your SRAM compatible or SRAM converted Game Boy Advance ROM file. Select your file, and when ready to begin, click the open button. In the Joey's output progress window, you will now see that the software is erasing the video game ROM data currently present on your cartridge. After the erasing process is completed, then the process for writing the new ROM file will start. Please remember not to disconnect your Joey cart writer or the game cartridge during this process. After a few moments, you should be greeted by a message that the cart writing process has been completed. Click the OK button to close the message, and if everything was done correctly, you should see that the cartridge header information populates in the Joey software's interface window. Let's test it out. Disconnect your cartridge from the Joey Cart Writer and pop it into a Game Boy Advance handheld. With a little bit of luck, your cartridge will boot up just like the real thing, and you're ready to get playing. So, congratulations! You just finished making your very own custom Game Boy Advance game cartridge. As fun and exciting as the Joey and this technology is, chances are this process won't go as smoothly as I've described. So just in case, I'll now be covering various ways to troubleshoot and overcome some of the most common obstacles you may face when using the Joey. In my experience, during longer sessions, the Joey software sometimes quits communicating with my cart writer and displays error messages in the output progress window. I don't necessarily think that this is a problem with the Joey software or my cart writers. It's more than likely a problem with the USB ports on my computer. So if you also encounter similar issues, this problem can typically be fixed by disconnecting and reconnecting your Joey cart writer and restarting the Joey software. I've also found that fully restarting my computer can also fix the problem when simply restarting the Joey software does not. When writing to game cartridges, if you're ever not sure about which cartridge type in the Joey software to use, always remember to consult Benven's online cart guide. Since there are so many different options of aftermarket and bootleg cartridge types to choose from, I've often found myself getting confused at times, and not remembering which option to use for a given cart. Also, if you're not sure how large the ROM dump for your game cartridge is going to be, or if you encounter a problem with loading your ROM files into an emulator, you may have picked too small of a dump size for it. Typically, 64 or 128 megabits is a large enough dump size to get the job done. Unless if we're talking about Mother 3. 
that game is just stinking huge and somehow requires a 256 megabit ROM dump, which apparently is the largest ROM size supported by the Game Boy Advance hardware. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that some bootleg cartridges can either be dead on arrival or have faulty flash modules in them. The flash modules on these carts are what store the game ROM data. So a faulty flash chip on these carts can have varying effects on reading and writing game ROMs. You can typically tell pretty quickly that there's this kind of problem with one of these carts since it receives an error message in the Joey software when you're either reading from or writing to the cartridge. There isn't really a fix for carts with these kinds of problems since they're so inexpensive and cheap. The best solution I can recommend is to buy at least several bootleg cartridges at a time so that you minimize your risk of buying a lemon. In some rare cases, a bootleg cart with a bad flash module may still be usable. For example, one of my bootleg cartridges had a bad block of memory in its flash chip, but from the looks of where the error came up when I was trying to write to the cart, the bad memory block seems to be somewhere in the middle of the chip. This means that I can technically still use the game cartridge for very small game ROMs, which I found that it can write with no problem. The Flappy Bird ROM file that I loaded onto this cart is fairly small in comparison to other ROM files, so that's what I've opted to use this faulty cartridge for. Recently when I was dumping ROM information from my genuine copy of Metroid Fusion for Game Boy Advance, I ran into a rather interesting problem. In the beginning of the game, there's an intro cutscene that plays. However, in my dumped ROM file, the cutscene gets stuck in a rather funny way. I realized then that there was information actually missing from the ROM file itself. So I downloaded someone else's ROM dump of the game from the internet to see what was missing from mine. I compared the information in both ROM files to each other in a program called HXD. This tool allows you to deconstruct the hex information in video game ROM files, as well as other files that use hex code. After comparing my ROM dump against the one from the internet, I confirmed that most of the game's information was indeed there. But how this ROM even managed to boot in the Visual Boy Advance emulator is beyond me. So how did this even happen? Well, believe it or not, dust and debris from the 16 years that I've owned this Metroid Fusion game cartridge had settled on the pins and were affecting how it was being read by the Joey. To fix this, you can simply clean your cart's pins with a pencil eraser. Disassemble your cartridge by removing the tri-wing screw on the back of the cart, and then rub a pencil eraser against the connector pins. This should clear away any debris that doesn't belong there. You can also clean your cart's pins by using rubbing alcohol and cotton swabs. Don't be afraid of getting the electronics in your cart wet, since rubbing alcohol evaporates very quickly. So any excess alcohol that you may spill on your cart will be long gone by the time you put your cartridge back together and use it again. After cleaning your cartridge's pins, try performing another ROM dump with your Joey. With that little bit of cleaning, you should now more than likely get a good reliable reading from your game cart. I truly hope that this tutorial has been helpful to you in your pursuit to flash and create your very own Game Boy Advance game cartridges. The Joey Joe Bags is truly a wonder of a device and it has allowed me personally to accomplish one of my childhood dreams. I'll be posting more tutorial videos in the near future on some of the various other cartridges that can also be used with the Joey as well. Also keep an eye out for my Joey Tutorial Part 2 video, where I'll be walking you through the ins and outs of writing and dumping save data to and from game cartridges. This tutorial video will serve as a base for all of my future Joey Cartwriter tutorials, so make sure that you fully understand all that I've covered in this video first since I'll likely be glossing over the finer points of the Joey hardware and software in future videos. As I've done before, I want to once again thank Ben Venn for helping me in compiling all the information that I've presented in this video. Without Ben, the Joey wouldn't exist, and neither would the rest of his neat projects. Go check out his Facebook page, where you can follow him and the many projects that he's currently working on. And while you're at it, why not check out his website and pick up a Joey of your own, or a custom ribbon adapter for making your very own backlit Game Boy Color, which by the way, I've also made several tutorial videos on as well, so be sure to check those out if you haven't already. Also, I have finally made an Instagram page. My videos sometimes take me a while to edit and post, and I'd like to keep in touch with you guys a little more often and keep you in the loop. So check me out on Instagram at Kyle's Awesome Life. I put a lot of time, effort, and money into making these tutorial videos and my weekly vlogs, 
so I hope you all like them. Speaking of which, if you do like this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know by clicking the like button below. And if you like it so much that you want to see more of my content, or you just want to follow what I'm up to, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you all again so much for watching. As always, stay awesome, and I'll see you in my next video.